Well, good morning, my friends. I'm here today with another episode for our Book of Knowledge. And today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about another way to join the This is a more decorative join. And I should wait till you to explain a little bit. So let's switch to the next, to where you can see the, the fabric that I have. This is a more decorative join. Um, I first discovered this when I was looking at a bedspread that was made in Hardanger embroidery. And it was wide enough to fit, I believe it was a regular twin size bed. Well, it draped down the sides a fair amount. And it was like, well, fabric doesn't quite come that wide. And yet you could see really no place where fabric was joined. It wasn't obvious where it was joined. So a little more research, I discovered it was more this type of join, where it really becomes part of your design. If you're doing, say, a band sampler, it can become a band in that band sample. It could be used, for example, there's Blackbird designs where you're joining two pieces of fabric together to make the block. You could use something like this to make it decorative in between. Or things that are blocks like, say, the Blackbirds, I think they had that flower series. If I'm remembering correctly, you could join all of those blocks in this manner and make it a little bit more decorative of a piece. You could stitch them as individual squares and then join them. Because not only can you do the join in this direction with two pieces, you could also join it down here or up at the top so that you could add on all four sides of that square and I'll, sh and I'll show you a little bit of how to do that. Now, the other thing you could do, say, say you're taking, um, or even, okay, I have in front of me hanging on my wall, the sheep virtues by Little House Needleworks. And yes, I put them on a bell pull. However, if I were to have stitched them individually, I could have joined them in this manner. And here in the join, you could stitch a decorative border before you do all of this work to put it together. So that is another option. Or is it the Home Sweet Home Stitch Along by um, Donna Bayless of, um, oh good Lord, it just flew out of my head, by the Bay Needle Arts. You could take that border that is in between, if you're doing it as one piece, that is in between each block that she's giving once a month, and you could stitch that in here. Okay, so this has some options. I was really fascinated with this, and I really, and I, and I really do like it, so I thought I would share how to do it with all of you. So, you flip it over, it looks the same on the other side too. So it's reversible, okay? And really the whole, the bottom line to this is it's very much like a French seam that you use on men's shirts. That's really what it pretty much amounts to. So how do we do this is the question. So here we go. You take your two pieces of linen. Okay. Now I have already creased mine so that I can make this a little easier. And you can make this any width that you want. So you want to fold enough to make a hem so that you have don't have a raw edge here on this side. And then you want to fold it up to whatever width 
whatever width you want it. I mean, you can make this as wide or as narrow as you like. So oh, I have made mine about here. Now, so that you get things straight, what I would recommend is this. On this fold, first fold line, I would pull a thread. I'm just going to use my needle. Go in here and get a hold of one thread and just give it a little tug. So I'm going to pull this all the way across. This, by the way, is where your um, Uncle Bill's tweezers that I talked about in the Hardanger classes come in handy. But this is just a little piece, so I'm not going to, it's not that much to pull. So that would make our first fold. And you would fold it right on that fold thread. Okay. Our trucks. So this, we're going to pull a thread up here. Sorry about the noise, guys. Looks like the fire trucks are gone. It's so dry here in Pennsylvania. We're under a drought warning. I wonder if there isn't a brush fire somewhere. There usually tends to be one near us. So I'm going to pull the second thread here. So that gives me the line that this is going to fold over. This is going to fold over. And then do one more where it is going to fold up to it's going to fold up to about here we're going to pull this thread i just think by pulling the threads it makes it easier to uh, match up your where you need things to be there we go. Now, here at this third pull, pull thread, you're going to want to pull several more because we're going to do that decorative hem stitching like I talked about in a previous video on hem stitching. So again, this portion here can be as narrow or as wide as you want it to be. For example, if you're using it in a sampler, you may want this rather wide because it can become a decorative border within your sampler. Okay, so it, it depends on what use you're going to use this for. You know, I will mention here that this is a good way if, for example, you cut your fabric a little too short for that, for that uh, sampler that's a long sampler this is a good way to add your fabric because you can add fabric you can make a decorative border out of it and just incorporate it into that sampler now, you would do a decorative border on both sides and i would probably for sure stitch something in here and incorporate that into the sampler that you're making and if you're using this say to join blocks into one piece to make it one big um, one big piece as opposed to several little ones then maybe you want this not quite as wide i think maybe i pulled five four or five threads here on this one and then i have another sample where i pulled more so for this and for demonstration purposes we're going to make this we're going to pull this is number two Three, four. Okay, let's just pull six. Okay. And then after you have that first one out, 
we all know the rest of these come out so much easier when you can get a hold of them. What happens when you cut your nails shorter? You can get hold of stuff. <laughs> So this piece is ready. Okay. We got our first fold. We got our second fold. That's going to come up here to this edge. Okay. So now we need to do the same thing for the second piece. Now, like I said, I already have this pre-folded. And this does not have to be 100% exact. It, it will be fine. As long as you're like reasonably close. That's number one. First fold. I'm gonna come up here to the line where I put my second fold line. And what I did just I just guesstimated this so that it was about the same. in here and pull this one and of course fold on that line and we're going to go up here and as I said these as long as they're close about the same. We can go up here and pull for fold. Well, first we'll stick ourselves with the needle. And then we'll fold. Now you can use your needle and go all the way across with it. I just find it easier to get a good bit started and then just pull. Sorry. Three. This is all the prep work on getting it, getting it ready. This is why the tweezers come in handy because it's really hard on your fingers. <laughs> okay, now we have all our thread pulled. So, what's next? What do we do next? We got two pieces. They're matching up. So, you want to take piece number one and fold that up and that. Now what I usually do, not yet, but we'll just finger press that so that it stays folded. Then we're gonna take piece number two and do the same thing, fold it. Now, as I said, Remember I said this is very much like a French seam on a man's shirt. 
So what you do is you take piece number one, or it doesn't matter, take one piece. You take the second piece and insert that first half underneath, bring this back over, matched up. Match that here. And that matches. I'm just going to stick a pin in here to secure this. So that's one side. You would secure this all along, right? And I'm going to flip it to the other side. And I know that this is matching the way it should. So now I just need to adjust this other side. To where it should be. Okay. So now you can see both sides. Right. And then I'm just going to pin this together for now. Needles. <laughs> oh, we all know how that goes. That's what you have handy, so that's what you use. So I'm going to pin this together. And as you can see, everything scooched a little bit, but we'll fix that up as we are hem stitching. Okay. So you just want everything to line up pretty nice. So that's how you put it together. And now the rest of it is just doing the hem stitch the way we did in the previous video. Let's just do a little bit of that on one side. And the cheek is just a smidge of a knot. Okay, and I'm going to hide that knot in inside. Tuck it in here going to be visible. And now you're going to do this just the same way as we did the hem stitching before. You're going to come up and you're going to grab two stitches or two threads or four threads, whatever your preference may be. And you're going to come down and you're going to go here. Threads. So that what you're going to be doing then is just stitching this the same way as we did the hem stitching on our previous in our previous videos where I showed you how to how to hem stitch. Okay, and you're gonna do. To do that along the whole edge and like I said you can pick up along here any number of threads that you want you can do two uh, I think on the other one I did four I'm not quite liking two and since this is just a sample but 
get let's do four this next time i think that's a prettier bundle it gives it a little bit more definition My needles keep sticking me in the hand. <laughs> so we'll get four. Yeah, I would do four instead of two, unless unless your pattern is calling for more than that. So after you've completed this side, oops, after you've completed this side all the way up, then you just do the flip it around and do the same thing down this side. Now, here's the other thing that you can do. So I'm not going to sit here and do the whole thing for you, but you get the idea. The main part is how you get these two pieces together. And I've showed you that, and then you just if you need to go back and um, refer to the hem stitching video, and that will refresh your memory on doing the hem stitch. Hem stitch it along one side, you hem stitch it along the other side. And if you so choose, and say you're using it in a sampler, you can also hem stitch it on this side and do any. Depending on how wide you made this, you can do some decorative stitching within here. So you can also like finish off this side with some hem stitch. So that's how you join just two pieces. Now you have a square you want to put together. So basically. You do the same thing. This piece I have done all my little needles in here to <laughs> hold things together. Okay, this piece I can show you where I hem stitched on this side. Now I'm going and doing this side to give it a little bit more decoration. I pulled more threads out and I did more did more hem stitching on this side and this other half will be identical but now i need to join this to this now this is going to be a little loppy because they're not the same size but that's okay it's, i just want to get you the principle on how to do that these extra needles out of here so I don't keep sticking myself. Now the other thing you can do instead of all the pins is just run a basting line up the center of this to hold it together. And if you're going to do decorative stitches in here, do those first before you do all of all of uh, the putting it together and hem stitch. Do the decorative border in there first and then go on to the joining. Okay. So now we want to join two pieces in this direction. Well, it's done exactly the same way. It's done exactly the same way. First, I'm going to fold up so that you don't have a raw edge here, so you have a clean edge, and then you're going to fold it up again. You're going to pull your stitches out here or up here. You're going to pull these stitches out okay. so that you have essentially okay, I'm thinking a minute because we're going to pull this out too. 
So make sure you have your hem stitch done first. And then you're gonna, it's gonna leave you with an empty corner here. Okay. Pull these out. Okay. You're going to take this. And we're just gonna say this is all stitched. <clears throat> We're going to do the same thing with this edge. Fold it up. Fold it up again so that we have this. And then we're going to put these two together just the same way as we did before. Now, please note. This is going to be thick at this join, and this is going to be super thick here because of these two together. Hold it better. <laughs> Put these two together and then you join it this way. That would be the same thing. And then you have both sides and you would stitch both sides. Yes, this middle part is going to be thick. And this is particularly thick because of I have a really wide a really wide border here and not a narrow one there so you'd want to make all your borders the same you'd want to iron this flat before you start joining it um you may even want to take some of this inside bulk away like you may want to cut some of this to reduce the bulk for when you're folding it up i wouldn't cut anything that's folded here but you may want to reduce the bulk a little bit since this is just practice piece let's see what happens if i Experiment time here, folks. <laughs> so you'll know whether to do this or not. I'm not going to do it there, but I may just do it here. Take this and reduce it to that first fold. This one. Okay, we're we're getting into experimentation here, my friends. If I've not done it this way, let's just reduce that. Just reduce this. This one. Okay, so we can still put that together. Oh, that's by far less bulky. And then when we put it up like this, oh, that's so nice. Okay. That's much better. So then we would do the same on this piece, and that would help. Actually, we could. You could reduce this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. You could reduce this all the way up to your. Okay.
Again, this is just an experiment here, my friends. <laughs> Okay, so that we reduce that whole amount, put this back together, fold this up, and then fold it up to wherever. Oh, that certainly has taken a lot of that bulk away. So then, if you do the same on the piece that you're joining, you're dealing with a lot less you're dealing with a lot less fabric and the, the bulk is not there okay. so i'm going to experiment a little bit more with this and i will do um, a follow-up to what i find okay but that's the principle for joining that second, second piece of fabric. You're going to fold this up, put the two together, have one go one way, one go the other way. We'll get rid of some of that bulk. I mean, it is going to be bulky no matter what you do, but we can try and reduce some of it. So I will do a bit of a follow-up on that. But that is how to do a more decorative join of two pieces of linen. Like I said, you can incorporate this into a band sampler. You can use it to join blocks that you've stitched individually into one large piece. Um, and I'm sure maybe you'll come up with some other ideas of how you can use it so there you have a decorative join of two pieces of linen so i hope this was helpful i hope you enjoyed and like i said i will experiment a little bit more with joining this other side um to get some of that bulk reduced and not affect the overall piece that we're trying to accomplish here. So look for a follow-up. So my friends, have a wonderful day. I will see you on the next video. Take care. And remember, the rules in cross-stitch or needlework are the ones you make for yourself.